good for being here. It's the last day of DevCon and it's finishing in a couple of hours, so I guess you're all very tired. So we all appreciate you coming. Um, so my, my, my talk is uh, about licenses, so open source licenses, to top it off. You know? um, so it's going to be just a very quick overview and even really a snapshot of the open, sources, uh, the open source blockchain projects and which licenses they've chosen to work with in our space. Okay. Um, so I'm going to just tell the little story of how I've built the, the data for this sort of project. I think it really speaks to how the open source community can work together for the main uh, coming goal. So first of all, I started just building like a, my own list of open source blockchain projects out there, you know, manually. And then I thought I could crowdsource that, um, that initiative and I tweeted out and I posted on Reddit for people to help me out. That was great because the list started growing. But then I was um, then I truly pointed to the Sandment API, which is actually great because um, thanks to them, I got a database of basically more than a thousand, at that time, more than a thousand um, blockchain projects and their GitHub URLs. So that made it much, much, much easier for me because that plus the fact that the GitHub um, API has a license endpoint made it so that I could just basically you know, pick each one of these projects and see what uh, the license each one of them had, right? So, sounds simple. Um, so in the end, I basically built a list of more than 1,500 projects and more than 10,000 repos, so each project has multiple repos inside of it. And um, so it's interesting because it actually gives us some you know, data to analyze and gives us some, some, some real data points. So this is kind of what the data looks like. Um, although this graph itself is very useful because the size of the triangle here represents the amount of repos. So it's not a very, very you know, useful data point itself, but it's a fun nonetheless, and it's a pretty image. And just as a side note, so we have Ethereum here in the orange red, right? And um, it's in, I think it's second place in terms of amount of repos. First place goes to a Bitcoin Lightning uh, project called the Cross Token. And then uh, there's a uh, BitPay as well. It takes so this is where we got uh, more interesting data. So most of our repos in the blockchain space don't have a license attribute to So 51% of them don't have a license. Okay? And I'll get back to the non-licensed products right, uh, right, right away. But before that, if we take those out, we can see that most of those projects, um, most projects that do have a license, choose MIT license. So 55% of them use the MIT license, followed by Apache with 15%, and then GPL3 with about 10. All of that followed by a diverse mix of GPL typed licenses, um, and then others. Right? Uh, interesting licenses nonetheless, like unlicensed and uh, do whatever you want with the license, that kind of license. Now, I don't know how scientific this is, probably isn't at all, but um, I did find uh, an inverse relationship between the number of words in license and the popularity of it. So it actually does make much sense because if we want to really read the license and even understand what's in it, personally, I would choose a 172 word license than uh, almost 6,000 uh, word license, right? Um, I would almost bet that maybe what one, two, three, five percent of people who actually use the GPL3 license have read those 5,688 words. I'm not sure. But, uh, anyways. Yeah. So, you know, anyways, so that, I think that's an interesting um, one of the um, potential conclusion of this uh, picture. <coughs> um, this is a chart of the 2015 GitHub blog study on repo licenses. And in fact, if we compare it to today's blockchain space, at least, um, we see some tendencies, MIT being used more, um, gaining some space. Uh, so GPLv2 losing some. In my opinion, probably losing some to GPLv3. Um, you know, some people incorrectly so think that GPLv3 is an, is, a, is an evolution of GPLv2, which isn't really the case. Again, I'm not going to go into those details. If you want to speak about that, see me after the talk. Um, and Apache gaining some space as well. So um, lastly, just to go back to that non 
licensed uh, projects, so we have 51%. If we compare that to the same study on GitHub, um, on that 2015 GitHub repo um, study, we see a clear tendency to not license our projects full well time, which is basically you know, a big shame because when we don't license a project, it, it has a default like copyrighted license. So we should be aware of that. And also, <clears throat> if we take this uh, last 2015 data point, uh, we're basically at least ahead in terms of that overall um, 2015 stat and today. Even though we're at 51 percent, and it's a big number, and we should probably try to reduce that at least for the <coughs> um, So that's all I got. If you want to talk more about the types of licenses and why to choose one over another, um, you know, this is only five minutes. I don't have the time to do that. But if you want, um, we can talk about later that later. Although I do worry, I'll be talking about uh, Pegasus, Hyperledger, and why we chose that. Actually, two point one licenses. That's all. Thanks, everybody.